a big idea, a new world order. Your world is not what it seems. Alex Tensory. Outside the box. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a new edition of Outside the Box. Obviously, we've got a lot of stuff to talk about tonight. Clyde Lewis of Ground Zero Radio and KUFO is in studio tonight. Thanks for coming on, Clyde. Thank you so much for having me tonight, and I'm very glad to be here again. It's been a while since I've been here on PCM. Glad to be back, at least to talk about what's going on, not only in Portland, but around the country at the moment. Absolutely, and, and you actually haven't been back on the show since you've gone through your uh, treatment recently. What was going on with your health recently? I actually uh, developed cancer, and uh, it was something that uh, kept me down for about a year and a half, two years. i got a clean bill of health now, and I'm uh, ready to go, and that's why I'm back on the air. I'm back on KUFO. And after being off the air for five years, you're now on one of the largest FM stations in the Pacific Northwest. Yeah, that was kind of a, a nice thing that happened. I really want to thank Alpha Broadcasting for giving me the opportunity. I, I love the company. I love the people involved with mm. Alpha. Uh, a lot of people have said, well, what do they know about radio? They're a fantastic group of people, and uh, they gave me the opportunity to do my show, and I'm very grateful for that. Well, phone calls and emails always uh, matter, so uh, ditch at uh, KOFO.com if you'd like to uh, support Grand Zero being on the station. So, Clyde... Yeah, ditch at... at, at, ditch at KUFO.com. He's the program director. His name's Ditch. So yeah. don't let that Very fool important you. stuff. Yeah. Um, now, Jesse Jackson was yes. just in town recently, and mm -hmm. you're also working at KXL News Radio 750, and so you've got yeah. your ear to the ground. Um, I was on your show on KUFO, and I'll thank you for having me and James on from sure. Media Monarchy. Sure. And we were talking about the emerging police state, something you and I have talked about for years. And now we're really starting to hit this, see this hit home on so many different levels. So where would you like to start with this particular story, not only the shooting, but also Jesse uh, Jackson's appearance in Portland last night? Well, one of the things that I find very interesting is that you're, you're bringing up a show that you and I and James Evan Pilato of MediaMonarchy.com did. Uh, it was a show that we did on uh, February the 14th. It was a Sunday. It was one of those things where, do I talk about Valentine's Day? No, nah, it's not necessarily a ground zero topic, but what I do want to talk about is I want to talk about the police state. But we expressed our love for the community. Yes, the love for the community. That's why we did this. But I, I wanted to talk about the police state, and the reason why was because everybody talks about the coming police state, when in reality, it's not a coming police state. We are here now in a police state because of some things that I was reading that really had me troubled. You see, the Barack Obama change that we're supposed to be experiencing right now is not change. We have extended the Bush doctrine policies that have put us in the pos position we are now as a country, a country that's a surveillance society, a country that's being run by 545 people that, that basically have created problems and now they're using the police as a mob to enforce it. Now, the police departments of every state, county, munici municipality, they do their best to uh, sustain uh, and also uh, serve and protect people. But there's also a faction that is here to enforce the laws and to also uh, be trained to do certain things that are questionable at the moment. And it, what makes me realize that perhaps we are stuck here in a police state now as opposed to having a police state coming. Now, I know that posse comitatus has not been overturned. I mean, that would be silly to say this. But what I'm saying is, is we're darn close. And, and it's like how government operates now with precautionary science and precautionary ideas is, is that it's close enough, so therefore it must be. One of the things that I was very concerned with was that I noticed that uh, I guess he was an intelligence uh, czar or, or someone that works in Obama's intelligence operations was saying that now it is uh, known as uh, corpus juris where you are guilty until proven innocent, especially if you're overseas, because now they have the ability and they do have uh, the executive power mm -hmm. to shoot and kill American citizens overseas. This means that if you are considered a threat, you don't get due process, and you're shot and killed. And I think it's because the, the CIA and several of the other shadow government agencies are back in the assassination business. But right. what's really interesting is that when we talked about this topic on my show, and we brought this up, we brought it up from the standpoint of the overseas intelligence says that they can shoot Americans uh, without due process, uh, corpus, uh, corpus juris, if you will. Uh, now we bring the focus back to Portland, Oregon, 
because of the fact that the Reverend Jesse Jackson came to Portland. He came to speak about the Aaron Campbell case. Mm -hmm. Now, for those of you who don't know about the Aaron Campbell case, uh, last month, uh, a gentleman named Aaron Campbell, who uh, was distraught over his brother's uh, death, his brother had died of uh, some cause, he was distraught over it. Uh, there was a phone call made to the police department. He was suicidal. They said that he had a gun, uh, that he was in the house with his three children. He let the three children go. And then when he left his house to surrender, he had his hands behind his back. He walked out and they fired non lethal bean bags at him mm -hmm. uh, to apprehend him. Well, what had happened is something strange. I guess he was frightened or something. He ran back into his apartment, uh, and they, one of the officers uh, shot him in the back with an AR-15. AR-15. And, uh, and it was left there to bleed to death. Yeah, and they had the a dog, dog sniffed, sniffed, around. sniffed around him. Now, Jesse Jackson, when he spoke at a rally here in Portland on Tuesday, uh, he had said that the thing that's most inhumane of all was that what we see here is we see a young man being shot and killed by police, but no one approached him, no one gave him aid, no one tried to revive him. They just let him bleed and die there at the scene. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and a lot of people are talking about how this is a divisive thing. And, and in reality, I guess you could say yes, in a way it is divisive, because what it's doing is it divides the community. We're already mm -hmm. polarized as it is, and we're looking at a, a police officer who was shot, a black man, and, uh, and this is something that we need, to, uh, we need to take into consideration. One of the things I thought was very strong about what the Reverend Jackson had said is he talked about how he felt that Aaron Campbell was executed, that it was an execution, and, and, and that's what it was. What I find interesting about that phrase, execution, assassination, these words, they are the same words that were used by Dennis Blair, who is this intelligence guy who said that now it is defined policy by the Obama administration to now shoot people who they feel are a threat to the country, as, uh, killing American citizens, which puts us right smack dab in a police state, using a militarized police force to take out people that they feel are a threat. Now, when you think about it, this is just a, a carte blanche, if you will, to hunt down, and, and I know why they're doing this, is because they want to be able to say, okay, we can hunt down and shoot members of the Muslim community who may be you know, attached, whether we know it or not, you know, without Again, due people, process. they say yeah. are terrorists. Yeah. They say are terrorists. Without due process, we can eliminate them, we can shoot them and kill them. And most Muslims, let's face it, are, are black. Uh, you know, they're, they're, they are, uh, you know, they are uh, black, and, and, and that's one of the things that worries me is because I have talked with a lot of friends of mine who I know. I, I live in a, a community that's uh, predominantly black, and I've talked with them, and I'd say, you know, what do you think of this? And they... They, you know, a lot of the times, a lot of people misunderstand that a lot of the black community knows what's happening. A lot of them know that we're looking at a divisive age where, you know, it's bad to say that what Jesse Jackson did was divisive, but it's true. It was divisive. It provided us with double thing because on one hand, we mourn the loss of Aaron Campbell. Uh, we mourn the loss in the community of, of a police force that uh, demonstrates uh, training and goodwill. We mourn the loss of a police department that abides by uh, good, good morals and standards rather than having to be a part of this mob that they've created, which is really sad. I mean, I, I know, what, I know that, that there are police officers out there that are wonderful people. Uh, I'm sure that Sizer is doing what she can to try and make this issue Hopefully. better. Hopefully. Hopefully. Uh, we, we have to have faith in our community, but it's difficult to have faith in the community when we have divisive things going on on and when we have to deal with double think. On one hand, we've got Jackson saying it's sure. an execution, how we should uh, abide by what Obama says because Obama's bringing change to the community. However, Obama's own intelligence people are now saying we can shoot to kill American citizens overseas when we're doing it so, right here in our so community. So this is the key, Clyde, and I have a couple points to make on this one. Right. Hypocrisy. Exactly. Okay, on one end, you're talking about racism. Okay, here's a fact on racism. Um, we haven't really uh, dealt with it uh, in our country right. until we deal with this illegal war on terror where millions of people in Iraq and Afghanistan are dying. As long as men and white men are working